numbers we're getting now are really going to be preliminary. I will say we were keeping an eye on one smaller county to see if it was true that Donald Trump was making inroads with Latino voters. This is a heavily Hispanic uh, community down uh, down on the, the U.S.-Mexico border. And you're seeing Donald Trump beat that 538 benchmark by about five percentage points. This was a place where in votes. So we do have areas that the Democrats can still pick up. But that that looms large. We're talking about, you know, three and a half percentage points and 188,000 votes that have to be made up in the remaining vote in these places. It's a tall order. Rick Klein over at the big board. Rick, thank you. When we come back, we'll be joined by the rest of the country. Our live coverage of the 2024 election returns here in just a moment. Right back to the battleground states. Uh, oh, yeah, they got all that great yeah. bay vote. The answer is yes when you, look, when you look up there. So the next thing we learned from Milwaukee is how many votes, what is her percentage, how does it affect the statewide map, and then how much is left? Yeah. How much is left? In your biggest area, you have to turn them out. Because then, again, I just want to come up here and look at this. Again, Brown County, this is Green Bay, blue-collar workers. Trump's getting 61. Vice President's getting 37 or 38, if you want to round that up. That matters. Oh, my God. That matters. He almost, yeah. he almost shot yeah. almost 10 points. Right. Nine points. Right. In, a, in, a, in a battleground state, he's up and she's down in a place where you know, if you're the Harris campaign, the Biden campaign, you know you're not going to win here. You know you're not going to win here. But if you make it that race... Yeah, if you make it that close, instead of that close, yeah. you get a better result, period. It's simple math. Let's go on to the other, the third of the blue wall states, Michigan. Uh, Jim Shudo is at a vote counting center in Detroit. Uh, and Jim, uh, you have an update on the vote in Wayne County. Tell us. Well, let me tell you, we've been in touch with the Secretary of State's office really every few minutes here trying to figure out when we're going to get another batch of Detroit and, of course, the surrounding Wayne County votes. And we're told very soon, they won't put a figure on very soon, but very soon. We know they're working hard, calculating those numbers, counting those votes, and that there have been no issues. They're not encountering any issues uh, with machines, etc. This is just a process of getting the work done. We've also been in touch with Macomb County, where we were outside of Detroit earlier today. They are also expecting, they say, another batch of votes to be reported quite soon. And here where we are in Detroit, this is the location where they've been counting the absentee ballots just in the last hour. Another 2,500 or so absentee ballots came in. That brings us pretty much to the end of the 100,000 that they've expected. At some point in the next hour, we'll see another U-Haul truck come in with the remaining absentee ballots that they've collected from drop boxes around the city here, and they've been counting as they've been going, remember, because they started counting last Monday. They didn't have to wait till Election Day. So those numbers will be done soon. I will say the Secretary of State told me earlier this evening that she's moving up her expectation that by midday tomorrow they could report final unofficial results saying she believes they might be able to do that tonight, perhaps after midnight in the next couple of hours. But of course, they'll have to get those Wayne County numbers uh, done first. I should note, the Secretary of State just walked, here, walked in here to monitor the counting of those absentee ballots as she's been doing at precincts uh, around the state. All right, Jim Chudo, thank you so much, Jim Chudo, uh, in Detroit. I mean, uh, John, I mean, it's 2024. They only have 16 percent reported in, uh, in Wayne County, home of Detroit. Uh, you know, one of the things you look for in life are consistency. Death taxes, Wayne County Wayne comes to life. Wayne County, Gary, Indiana, yeah, they're, they're consistent. This is my 10th presidential election, and yeah. it's the 10th time you've been counting late in the night, and you're saying, hello, Detroit, hello. Yeah. Uh, it's the way it is. But, you know, you see the Secretary of State's there, Jim is there. Again, that's nothing nefarious. It's just inefficiency, uh, you know, to your point about that we live in the technological age. Uh, and, and Jim just said, you know, they changed the law in Michigan so you could count some of the early votes. It's totally cool to rent a car, a house, or even this. So why not rent the stuff you need for your home, too? The place to do it is errands. Choose from thousands of new name brand products online and in store. Pick a payment plan that fits your budget and never get surprised by hidden fees. Rent what you need. It's better at errands. Plus North Carolina, plus Georgia, plus Arizona, plus Nevada. We're not done with the count. We're not done with the count. But this is this this, this is right now the map of 2016. That is the map of 2016, and that is the five alarm fire inside the Harris campaign to get on the phone. Again, we're not done, and we lived through 2020. I, I want to say it again, slowly and clearly. 
2020, this time of night, and there were states that changed, and they were largely, you know, Pennsylvania changed, Trump was ahead in Georgia, things have changed. We don't, there's not as many mail ballots out there as in 2020, so I would not expect as dramatic a swing. The question then becomes, go state by state, county by county, is the math there? And, you know, I'm making these, I'm trying to be fair, and trying to be, yeah, it's possible, yeah, it's possible. When you're leading in all of them, and you're Trump, I mean, that's what, that's what you're sitting in the headquarters. So, so maybe they're not gonna win them all, right? Maybe they're not gonna win them all, uh, but they're leading in all of them right now. So let's just look at what happened here. They come on in, <coughs> number one, it's the, you know, it's the small rural counties. When they fill in, when they fill in again, it's, it, you know, you say, oh, that's not a lot of votes. Well, that's a lot of votes when you have it there, and then you have it here, and, and then you have it again here. You know, you're getting 500, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 in all these little counties. Uh, you know, 120 votes there. You, that's only 5% reporting. You say, oh, that's not much. It's a lot. When you think you're going through a state, then you have all these counties, and then the question is, so what are the Democratic margins, right? You've got 83 counties in the state of Michigan. So, 56%, we're about halfway through in Kent County. It's the Grand Rapids suburbs, and she's running a little bit ahead of the president there. But Jake, the big question in Michigan is, when do those Wayne County votes come in, and what do they do to the statewide total? All right, John, well, CNN has a major projection. CNN projects that Donald Trump will win the state of North Carolina. This is the first of seven battleground states that we're keeping an eye on, and we are calling it for Donald Trump. What does that mean for the electoral count? Donald Trump now has 227 electoral votes. Kamala Harris has 153. 270 are needed to win. Let's go to Trump HQ in West Palm Beach, Florida, where we find Caitlin Collins. And Caitlin, as CNN is now calling North Carolina for Donald Trump. This is the first of seven battleground states that the campaign is watching with eagle eyes. Yeah, Jake, remember when I told you a few hours ago that it was going to be seen as a gut check for the Trump campaign? Listen here, it's a bit of a delay, but your call is playing right now over the loudspeakers in the room, Jake. You can hear the party here, the partygoers gathered at the convention center here in West Palm Beach cheering as your call is coming on the screen. They have been glued to CNN for the last several moments watching John King at the map going over each of these numbers. But North Carolina is an important benchmark for the Trump campaign because they were watching it to get a gut check for how they believe the rest of the evening could go. And I can tell you that what I'm hearing from Trump campaign sources is they are increasingly confident as the night is going on. Still not certain, of course, watching those very important blue wall states and to see what they look like. And so that is going to be the big question here as they continue to keep an eye on Pennsylvania, on Michigan, on Wisconsin as this is moving forward. Jake, I will tell you that we're seeing more people from the Mar-a-Lago party come over here to the Trump headquarters where this party is going to be held. But also, some Republicans are flying into Palm Beach. We just heard from House Speaker Mike Johnson, who is watching the results come in with his constituents back in Shreveport. He is now headed here tonight because he is predicting a bigger Republican margin in the House, a Republican takeover of the Senate, and he says he believes a Republican is going to win the White House. Therefore, Donald Trump, Jake, obviously still waiting to see, but a noticeable shift here in the mood at the Trump headquarters. All right, Caitlin Collins in West Palm Beach at Trump HQ. Thank you so much. So, the first of the seven battleground states to fall seen in projecting North Carolina for Donald Trump. This was the most probable pickup for Kamala Harris, if that was the world in which we were living. That is why Donald Trump went down there multiple times in the last 24, 48 hours of the campaign. Uh, and it clearly did not happen for Kamala Harris. And Trump, he's telling his people, I'm told, and just like we heard from Caitlin, that this is uh, something that is that portends well for the future. We don't know what it means for the other states, but what we do know is it's even more evidence that that blue wall is the path for Kamala Harris. And that path is just more and more narrow, I think we're seeing as the night goes on. Um, but also, take, so many people thought that perhaps this would be an election that in tenor and tone would be closer to the midterms, a big conversation about abortion. That is not where it's going. It seems like you're seeing that male turnout is starting to produce what the campaign wanted. You know, I think a, a lot of us came into tonight wondering, was it going to feel more like 2016 or 2020? And four years ago, I was at Fox, and at almost exactly this moment, at 11.20 p.m., 
we made the very controversial call. They made the very controversial call <laughs> of Arizona. And that changed the whole feeling. And that's one of the reasons the Trump campaign was so furious about that call, because it was the first flip and the first indication that maybe it was going to be different than 2016. Right now, and look, there's a lot of voting to count to be, uh, and uh, states to be called. But right at this moment, this does feel more like 2016 than 2020. It, it, it is interesting, and yeah, and then the fact that we're calling it at this point is also significant because I don't think North Carolina was called last time, four years ago, and told maybe a week after the election, or it was certainly after Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania came on Saturday. I think North Carolina was Sunday or Monday. Uh, the fact that we are making this call now suggests that it is, there's a bigger gap uh, than there was last time. And Donald Trump won it last time by something like 75,000 votes. General, generally speaking, he is overperforming what he did in 20. Yep. 20, and she is underperforming what Joe Biden did in 2020, and that ends up what was a narrow edge for Biden. Is at this po at this point uh, we have to condition it a narrow defeat for for Harris. And the thing about North Carolina, and John has been talking about this, and we'll do more at the wall is you do have um, kind of a sense of of the country in the state of North Carolina, in that there is uh, there are growing minority populations. And there is uh, a growing sort of suburban, maybe more moderate uh, population in and around uh, the big cities. And so that is why the Harris campaign thought with the dynamics of the country right now that she would have a, a better shot. But look, the headwinds of the economy, the inflation that people are feeling, the difficulty in everyday, their everyday lives. Yeah, she could not outrun she that couldn't. Biden economy. And the economy, Chris, that is, uh, that is what people are feeling every single day. I mean, we were talking earlier about whether or not the um, sort of women and the idea of this being the first post-Roe presidential campaign was going to um, supersede how people felt when they were buying eggs and milk. 